Welcome, Mark. Well, uh, to get us another perspective on the workings and the performance of the National Assembly, the Eighth Assembly at that. Imanan Anyegbolam joins us this morning. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Well, now that uh, I mean, you're in there, uh, close proximity with the National Assembly, even this Eighth Senate, from what you've seen, a year's assessment in terms of expectations of the people, the bills they expect them to pass, the perception that people have of the National Assembly. Do you think it's changed with this Eighth Assembly one year on? Well, uh, I will start by saying uh, that uh, public good ought to be the object of the legislature. The means to achieve it is the science of legislation is knowing the true good of the community and the act lies in finding, in realizing that good. So on this, this is uh, Jeremy Benton saying this. So on this call, I will say, well, we have had a 365 days. Within the 365 days, if the assessment or the scorecard goes into laws, resolutions, or motions passed, um, well, only one law actually has been passed, and which is the current budget. You must have known that, assented by the president. And then if we take it on the score of the current budget, uh, the, as at the time the budget came, came up and was passed by the National Assembly, the exchange rate was not up to 200 naira per dollar. As of now, we are on 367, I've seen it within the uh, secondary market. So the baseline is this. Though much seems to have been taken, a lot still abound. And I will not really subscribe to the National Assembly being only the Red Chamber, where the emphasis is on the Senate, because the Green Chamber, you cannot have a law in a bicameral legislature through a constitutional means without both chambers passing the law and then being assented by the president. So if you take a cue, it is a really emphatic, more or less, that we started. We have had 365 days. As at the moment, uh, we are in June, when the second estimate, when the estimates for 2017 budget must have been on now, in executing our budget, um, I don't think we have really gone into main execution of the 2016 budget. So holistically, I will say, well, we have tried to model through, but there has not been a, a significant departure from what it ought to be. But there are some uh, areas, uh, like I, the... the Chairman on media has talked about the collaboration to streamline most some of the bills. Like there is a contribution from a, for, um, the Law Reform Commission. There have been uh, the PIB is still on after the, from the CISA Assembly to now, and every other issue. And you must bear in mind, 20, uh, 12 months have gone. We have 36 remaining, and after next year, basically, we we'll go back maybe to companion and the rest of them. So these are the holistic uh, picture, um, taking it on that way. Well, they wouldn't say that it has been gloomy all through, but we must also bear in mind some of the issues that uh, are still within the setting. But uh, as at the moment, well, we have model through, let me say more or less, to be on a, more or less a fair pedestal. Do you think a bicameral... That's, that's my own take on it. Would you say a bicameral assembly serves us well? A bicameral assembly serves us well because uh, you must be wanting in mind. How, why do you have a bicameral assembly? To be able to have a more realistic consultation, negotiation, and discussion um, after the first assembly. Like if you, what it says now that you're operating a unicameral legislation. You will see, basically, though the issue of state is a very worrisome setting. What we are having more or less in the states, to say the least, is that we have um, um, been able, with more or less tyranny of uh, mediocrity. Whatever comes from the executive is rubber stamped by the assembly, and there is no second filter. But if you watch the setting of the uh, National Assembly, more often than not, you see a check or moderation, most especially from the Senate, 
and then equally from the House of Representatives, you award the issue of a price a hike of the of the food pump price. The House of Representatives typically, like what he did in uh, 2012, had then in 2012 we had a, a session on Sunday. This time around, it moved on a Monday to have a session, and then the Senate came in. Now watch the state assemblies and see if there's any reaction from them. So the issue is that the, uh, what leads to the wisdom of second assembly, even in England, where we have the model, the, uh, the model of, uh, of the uh, parliament, you have House of Commons, you have House of Lords. And when the United States took it upon itself, because it was done on what, what we call the kinetic uh, compromise in the United States, was achieved because some of the states felt that uh, we must have what our own representation if we move only on population it will lead to a problem so let us now have a uh, based on number of states and then the population spread so they were able to have a congress of uh, senate and house of representatives which we also adopted and it has it has solved the problem of most federal states and have solved our, ours as well and the even United Kingdom, which is not even a federal state, you've seen uh, uh, the UK, like I've given an example with House of Laws and uh, the Commons. So I still endorse, and it is still the best for us at the moment to have a bicameral legislature, irrespective of whatever every person feels about it. But that was my own submission. Okay, but some of those who argue think that, well, first and foremost, in, in the parliamentary system, the UK, which you mentioned, they have a lot more robust representation. They also have that principle, proportional representation. So people can, or legislators or parliamentarians, can make those points without any encumbrances or fetters or shackles. And then you look at some other clans where they also have a democracy. They also have the federation units are very strong, such that the center doesn't dictate what happens. But in our case... We have it a little different, and so they look at the system that we've got, the political party structure, the system. Now, when they talk about the internal democracy needing to be strengthened, and they say, look, all of those hindrances or challenges, impediments, some of them describe it as, are things that are making our bicameral system not achieve the kind of effect that we will want it to achieve. Well, we have a structural problem, not basically on a... Uh, by camera or unicameral legislature, like I've given you an example with the states. We have a problem that we are running a democracy where the institutions are alarmingly weak. Let me recount this. It is, look at the political parties. They cannot actually articulate, let me say more or less, they cannot articulate a policy. And that's where we, our problem lies. And since we have had the certain that the political party is the vehicle of democracy. But our political parties, if you want them, there is no ideological difference. There is no program. They are, they are more or less running on dehydrated their manifesto. So the basic issue and then the uh, ownership which will have come through civil society is not there. So we have a lot of problems that are structural, like I have always said. Then to lay it now on the structure of government, if you have only a unicameral legislature, it wouldn't do that. Let me give you an, an instance, a, strike, a striking instance. If you watch what is happening with the uh, ESCC investigation, a minister of petroleum was able to dispense, to, uh, by what we saw within the papers, $260 million to a bank. Now, have you asked yourself, then, when we were talking about our bachelor's loot, the estimation was that almost four hundred, almost four billion dollars left the coffers. As of now, you have no inquiry of who really is in charge of our treasury. Is it the accountant general, the auditor general? We have not even addressed these critical issues. Yet we are all making noise about the setting. So the issue is this: until you go to the structure, organigram, and the basic elements of good governance.